Welcome everybody. Thank you for jumping on. Uh, Sean Foyt here and uh, this is day number five of our 21 days of prayer for America. Uh, we are so honored today to have a special guest with us and to help us on this journey. Um, I, I first want to say I've just been meditating today on how profound it is and how grateful we are to have you know, President Trump kick off this 21 days of prayer, which I don't know that an, a, a president or former president has really ever done before, 21 days like this. Um, to date, right before we started this broadcast, we have over, I believe, 32,000 people that are getting text messages and uh, that are receiving the daily prayer uh, requests, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it's amazing to, that we can mobilize an army of people to be praying the same thing at the same time. And I know there's a little bit of some glitches with the system. Some of you guys haven't got the text messages or the emails and our team is working on that. I think it's a good problem to be overwhelmed with too many intercessors. That's always a great problem to have. So we're, we're thankful for that and we're working on it. And I think there was a time there where we kind of overloaded the system, but we'll, we'll get it working. Uh, I want to hand it over to my pastor and a hero in the faith, Pastor Bill Johnson. He is here with us in Redding, California, and he is, what a privilege to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, John. It's, uh, it's an amazing honor to be alive right now. Uh, so many people lived during a time when there was no crisis, and they they weren't able to stand and make the kind of witness that only the gospel can make. And, and we, have that, uh, we have that opportunity. Uh, prayer is, is so significant. My, the only thing that makes me sad about prayer is it's become an activity instead of uh, like breathing. Uh, it says to pray without ceasing. So it's much like breath. It's the continuous fellowship with God where nothing is too big and nothing is too small to bring to him. And we learn to interact with him. Um, sometimes it's in words. One of the most uh, significant uh, prayers um, in the Old Testament, I think, is when uh, Hannah was crying out for her son. And we've got this picture of her in the, in the temple. She's praying. And e e Eli thinks she's drunk because he just sees her lips kind of stammering, you know, and uh, it kind of rebukes her, you know. She says, I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of a lady. I'm I'm in travail to have, to have a son. And he tells her, uh, God's heard your prayer. You have what you asked for. Here's, here's the deal. One of the most significant answers to prayer in the Old Testament was a prayer that actually in that moment wasn't formed with words. It was actually the ache of the heart. And if there's any time that you and I as a people, if we just direct our, can we say our pain, our grief, our concern, our burden, all that stuff. We direct it towards the Lord, not in panic, not, um, not in anger. Uh, it does no good to accuse anyone before the Lord because we don't have that right. Uh, but instead to direct our hearts toward the Lord and in fellowship with him, sometimes those groanings of the heart are some of the deepest and most profound prayers. And I think everybody uh, can qualify for that right now because we, we see so much going on that we know isn't the will of God. Uh, he did not design uh, life to function the way it's happening so often in our, in our country. Here's a, a great word of caution. We see sometimes people at the root uh, of certain kinds of problems and forget the fact that um, the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not, uh, it's not an issue with people. It's with powers. And uh, so our a beautiful privilege is to love people, to serve people, to pray for people, not against people. And in doing so, we position ourselves to show mercy, but also to, um, uh, just a second here, I've got stuff going on with my phone that shouldn't be happening. Sorry about that. Um, uh, in that time, we have, we have the opportunity to come before the Lord and to represent people before God. That means we pray on their behalf. We don't accuse them. And then we represent God before people in that we bring the word of the Lord to people. And so we have this uh, amazing privilege in prayer. And uh, what you see with Jesus is he would, he would leave the disciples. He'd go up on a mountain and he'd spend the, the night in prayer. Uh, he would petition the Father. He would get his heart. Uh, we don't have any description of what happened there except, uh, except in the, the final night there uh, in the Mount of Olives. 
Um, we don't have a great description of his prayer time, but we know he went up to pray. And what you see when he came down was you don't see him praying over the sick. You don't see him praying over the demonized. You don't see him praying over um, various issues. What you see is decrees. So the point is, is he got the heart of God and then he made decrees. He declared things were to be done. He declared, uh, you go home, you're, you're a servant as well. He makes these decrees and they took place. One of the, the maybe the most uh, biggest missing elements of prayer for us is we make decrees, but most of the decrees we make are from us. They're not from the Father. And they, they only have human power behind them. But when we catch the heart of God, when we see what God intends to do, and it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to come from logic and reason. It's going to be because we are people of the presence that really pick up the heartbeat, the burden of God. We look at a situation and we, we are moved with a compassion that is beyond our norm. Uh, we are moved into an insight that's not an accusation, but it's an insight as to the root of a problem. And we make decrees. And so that's, that's really what I want to encourage uh, everyone uh, to do today on this, uh, on this fifth day of this uh, prayer journey that we have as a nation is to, is to come in before the presence of the Lord, get his heart. Jesus said he only did what he saw his father do. So there was some sort of a perception he had of his heavenly father and what he was involved in. Second, it says he only said what he heard his father say. So there was some sort of a, a connection there to what the father wanted to be done. Um, I like to put it this way. Jesus is the will of God. He is perfect theology. He illustrates <clears throat> perfectly the heart of the Father. And you and I have that responsibility and privilege. Um, we don't, you know, it's, it's legitimate for us to cry out to God for mercy, to have him show up and fix something and repair something. But sometimes he would rather do something through us than for us. And if we aren't able to make that transition and to realize I'm supposed to get into this situation that looks impossible, and make the decree, make the, the declaration that is in the heart of God. And so my prayer uh, for all of us today is obviously I'm going to join with you and just pray God heal us as a nation because what's happening is beyond human repair. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, we can't raise up the right person that's going to fix everything. This one has to be a, a sovereign invasion of the Holy Spirit to heal our land. And he's promised he would do that in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If we, the people of God, would humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked way, it doesn't say if the sinner turns from his, it says if the people of God would turn from theirs, then God would hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. We've got to get compromise out of the church. That's a really good beginning place. And this kind of a prayer gathering is a great opportunity to do that. So we come before the Lord and we watch him just come and to really heal our land to heal the, the brokenness, the division, all the, all the stuff. I don't know if you, if you realize this, but uh, it says in Ephesians 2 that Jesus bore the wall of division in his body when he was crucified. So if you could picture two absolute opposite groups that hate each other, that fight against each other, whatever it might be, it could be political, racial, it could be economic, it could be any, you fill in the blanks. But these two groups that are so opposite each other. And then it says there was a wall of division between these two. And it says Jesus took that wall of division on his own flesh so that when he died, the power of division was broken. Now, it's only maintained by our disobedience. But God made it possible for the uniting of any divisive group on the planet. God is able to heal the, the brokenness that exists in the heart's of all divided people. And so we pray these kinds of prayers. We make these kinds of decrees uh, the, way, uh, the way that Jesus did. We just look at how Jesus loved people and ministered to them. And, uh, and we learn to hear what the Father is saying. Um, I, we've seen situations, I remember uh, when our, our uh, Brian and Jen, their first uh, uh, daughter, Haley, was born, who by the way is getting married in a few weeks. Um, she, uh, there was very serious complications um, medically in the, in the birth. 
and uh, she was in NICU, the intensive care for children. I remember my, my wife, everybody's praying. Of course, we're all petitioning God for the miracle. But my wife just kind of separated herself from everybody, got into a corner, as she does. And she said, okay, Father, what are we doing? And he gave a very specific instruction of what to do and what to say. And she did by herself. One person with great faith is more powerful than a thousand people that hope something good will happen. And she just stood in that place and she made the decree that the father said. And honestly, within minutes, everything turned around and uh, Haley's health was restored to normal. It's a big deal. Just hearing from God, quieting our heart. You know, we come to God with an agenda in that we have, we have concerns and burdens, but, but we need to kind of own up to the fact the Bible says we don't know how to pray as we should. So if we come to the Father, God, I know that I'm concerned about things that you're concerned about. I know it's legitimate. I know that you, can, you care about these things, but I also don't know exactly what to do. So I'm coming to you, giving you thanks that you are a perfect Father. I give you praise. You have a history of healing the most broken situations. And I'm asking right now for the honor of the name Jesus, that you would restore us as a nation or a city or whatever it might be. And then you begin to pick up the heart of God. And what happens is you'll notice because you have a faith for something, something just kind of leaps in your heart. You have a faith for something. You, you stand in that place and it's no longer a petition because you know, you know, the father has heard you and you may, you begin to make those decrees. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, these two groups that hate each other in our city, you bore the wall of division, and I declare over them, peace shall reign in these groups that are in conflict. And, and you take something like that, and you start making these decrees. It's, it's not us directing God. It's us yielding to God and being the co-laborer he designed us to be. So let me wrap this up by just praying for you, praying for us, and of course, praying for for this nation. Father, uh, first we just, we honor you. We give thanks to you. We celebrate your goodness. You're the perfect father. We know that your heart is for things to happen here that only happen in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. This is our cry. The peace that is there, the honor that is there, the abundance that is there, the strength, the health that is there, that's what we want to reign in this nation. And we don't stand to accuse anyone. We just stand to say, Father, have mercy on us as a people and bring healing. And I declare a peace over this nation that is not a man's yes, peace. It's not the yes. absence of a problem. It's the presence of a person. I declare the peace of God, the shalom of yes, God, the wraparound presence of God to rest upon this nation, our leaders, that you would surprise them with the word of the Lord. You put prophets in the courts of the kings. We pray Thank this you. in Jesus' name. And I pray for these wonderful uh, believers that have joined their hearts to intercede and to pray for this nation. Let this be a season where we hear your voice in an unparalleled way. We hear your voice and we have the courage and the boldness to stand firm and to make the decrees that you are making. I pray for this in Jesus' name, that the mantle of prayer would fall upon this nation in a way that we've never seen before, in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray it all for your glory, God, that you would be glorified by a restored, healed nation. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor yeah, Bill. That was, yeah. that was really, really incredible. You can... You can sign up to join us on the journey at letusworship.us. And uh, this is day five. We'll release the prayer points to you at 222. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys are catching that, but th that's the time that we're texting it out every day, 222 Eastern. And um, thank you so much again. Have an incredible day. Let's believe for breakthrough and transformation in America. God bless. Mm -hmm.